There's a universe inside each of us. The Innerverse Podcast is your portal to that infinite realm of ideas. I'm Chance Garten, and I'll be your host as we serve up inspirational sound waves from the brightest minds with the highest vibes. And we keep searching for the empowering perspectives we need to create our greatest masterpiece of all, our lives. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to the one within all to Interverse Podcast. Back at it with a third visit from my really good friend, Garrett Graham. Garrett runs a personal business called Graham Holistic Healing, which is pretty dang awesome. I'll go ahead and show you guys. I'm going to do a screen share. I haven't done a lot of that on uh, live streams in the past, but I think you guys will like this website because I made it for him. (laughs) And here we go. This is Garrett's website. You can see that he's a holistic healer and spiritual life coach. He's based in Fayetteville. But lately, he's been all over the place, out of the country on some very shamanic adventures to pick up new tools and uh, methodologies and mindsets, perspectives to help people really learn what they need to care for themselves, mind, body, and spirit to transform their lives. So you can hit up Garrett if you're in the Northwest Arkansas, Southwest Missouri area, or even online for consultations. He offers all kinds of well-balanced stuff for you to take on board to your daily practice, especially in the realm of physical, personal training, but also in the energy healing and meditative (laughs) <laughs> mind healing, spiritual, emotional healing, all kinds of tools or just whatever you need to it. He's an adaptable uh, teacher and coach who can help you get your life in a, or actually see how your life's already been in alignment so that you can get out of your own way on it. Really. I'm sure that Gary would agree. <laughs> You're a lot more closer to uh, what you've always wanted than you realize. And it has a lot to do with the lack mentality that's holding you back. And anyway, I've given Garrett a lack of time to introduce himself, so let's hear what you've got to say. What's up, buddy? Welcome to the show. What up, Chance? <clears throat> Man, it's always an honor to be on here on the Interverse podcast with you and just to connect with you in general. Uh, so first, I want to say thank you, my brother, for having me on. Um, yeah, I'm super excited to be here, and my journey definitely has taken me all over the world in this last year and beyond. And essentially what I've been doing is just like gathering tools so that I can step more into my embodiment so that I can help the people that I work with in my own life and in my programs uh, with their embodiment as well. And so, man, it's just like what I do is I've put together all of the tools and the skills that I've learned over the last 10 years so that I can help people to rise into their embodiment of their next level of, of divinity and their awakening on this planet. And most, most importantly, uh, really what I'm helping people with doing now is to embody the awakenings that they've had in their life. Um, I'm working with high level spiritual beings and people have had these deep awakening experiences, but haven't quite figured out how to embody it and ground it into reality um, in a balanced way, like into everyday life. And so that's the main, that's the main thing that I'm helping people with today, brother. That sounds cool. If I had to guess what that actually looks like, it's definitely going to be unique for each person and it's going to be connected to some vocational element of who they are. Like for me, if I just want to use myself as an example, I was having all kinds of awakenings on different subjects and in different parts of my life, realizations on everything from diet to (laughs) the diabolical deeds of the powers that should not be, all kinds of little mini awakenings and like not knowing how to actually translate that into changing my life. I think that I spent a solid seven years in that pattern or, or so like probably from like 18 to 26, even you could say maybe 25 where maybe 24 at the earliest, I started getting into like creating and and art and that ended up being what helped me find a vehicle for living and embodying my awakening on a daily basis. And not and I'm still working on it. Actually, I still spend parts of my day on you know at like a nine to five. So I'm sure that I'm just like a lot of people that could use even more pointers on how I could 
you know, see myself differently, see myself in my full, fullest potential of not needing to uh, do anything just for money and actually only needing to do things for the love of what I'm doing. Does that all sound right? <laughs> Definitely, brother. And kind of the, the main thing about it is that uh, just to go in like to the money thing as well is like, and one thing I've been learning in my, in my journey as well is that money is just an energy. Right. And you'll definitely relate to this a lot. Um, everything is as above, so below. Right. And so whenever we're able to hold a lot of energy in our body, and which essentially is what my process is helping people to do, um, the money comes. Right. If that's your path that you that you would like some money, you would like enough money to do what you desire to do in the world, whether it's helping organizations that are helping people provide for your family enroll yourself in high level programs, whatever it may be. Uh, it's just another energy, right? And we're learning to tap into that as we tap into our wholeness and our self-worth within ourselves. Um, but yeah, man, definitely as far as what you were saying, the last seven or the first seven years of your awakening, give or take, we're kind of up and down from what it sounds like, you know, not really having the place to integrate them and all that, probably gathering a lot of skills on your own as well. But that's honestly at the point that we're at right now. I know you've definitely gotten on this level, man. It's all about sovereignty 2020, right? And so at the point that we're at right now, we have to embody those awakenings. We have to embody why we've come here to be. And so that's, that's the key, brother. That's what we're moving into now for sure. I love what you're saying about your personal charge being related to how much money you have capacity to hold on to. Totally true, man. Just look at the words, current, like energetic current or electric current, because we're electric beings and currency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's right there. You go to the the banks of the river are the banks where we keep our, and the banks where we keep our cash. Like there's all this flow and currency and energy that's just part of the language around money itself. I personally can relate Absolutely. to like times in my life where I was addicted to cigarettes really bad when I was younger, especially I would have like on and off problems with smoking. And when I was smoking, I would have less money. It was weird. <laughs> it was like, I just couldn't, I, I always be stressed about money. I couldn't quite feel like I had enough whenever I was making my body stressed by that chemical dependency and that, mm -hmm. you know, kind of horrific habit. So that's just one small example. It's a good thing to realize that whenever we feel stuck in one area, like emotionally, spiritually, or in a in career or anything, or in vocation, if we work on one of those other spots, we can get unstuck in all the spots. Like just getting in better physical shape, working working out more, loving your body more, moving more is going to bring more energy into your life. And another correlation I think is super important to realize is as above, so below, like you're saying if you can move your body in ways that are abnormal for you, move out, move in outside of the box ways. Like, you know, you would in yoga, for example, then yep. you can think in new ways. If you move your body in new ways, your mind will actually take on new patterns as well. So really helpful for finding new perspectives that can get you out into a positive change. Absolutely, brother. Yeah, man, it's, it's all, it's all related, right? It's all as above, so below. And so, <clears throat> the amount of current that we're, that we're able to circulate through our body is going to be directly related to how our relationships are, to what our financial flow is, to essentially like our happiness uh, at the core of it, right? And so really it's all about learning how to allow this energy to flow through our bodies, right? Because <clears throat> these bodies are actually very advanced electrical, mechanical, all bio, biomechanical systems. So in quantum right. too, just for good quantum, measure. Man, we, can, we, can say all, <laughs> we can say all the words right there. Right? <laughs> but our bodies are actually very advanced systems. And as we learn to tune in and to use our bodies in the way that they were actually designed to thousands and thousands of years ago at the peak of, of human existence, um, then... <clears throat> We learn to tap into the abilities of what it truly means to be human, right? And multidimensional. And multidimensional. And which, which is 
essentially what it means to be human is to be able to tap into all of those layers, all the other faucets of reality as well. When it comes down to like what an actual human is designed to be from what I understand and believe through my experience. It's really interesting you're saying this because I've been coming to this in my own personal research and experience as well. And studying astrology has really shown me this because we get sort of our ego ideal of who we are, which is this one character, one card out of the deck, one sign on the Zodiac. But when you start to study psychology and you study yourself, you realize that every archetypical character does exist within you. And then when you look at the planets and how they're actually connected to the organs and also the planetary gods that have certain attributes that are archetypal attributes that all humans contain within us, you realize that like true wholeness is getting to the point where you are literally able to embody all the archetypes or speak to the archetypes within yourself at any time. So like you need the sage archetype because you need some wisdom. Well, you can just ask yourself, ask that part of yourself or embody that part of yourself right then. You need the warrior because of whatever is going on in this time or moment. Well, ask the warrior what he would do or embody the warrior. And it's the internal division where we put those roles on each other, but don't allow ourselves to be them and sort of compartmentalize in societies where we all are only like, I'm a... I'm a janitor or I'm a banker, you know, like this is the real disease of, of, the, of our time is not realizing that we can actually, when you're talking about embodying your awakening, embodying your awakening means that you can literally embody any part of the human being spectrum that you want to embody at any point. And that's what I meant when I said the word multidimensional is like, you literally have got it all inside of you. Mm. Yeah, I love that you spoke to that about the multidimensional aspect in physical reality as well. Because what I was seeing when you said multidimensional is like other dimensions, you know. Yeah. Um, and and we can get into that as well. You know, I definitely intend to um, just about kind of the higher dimensional merging with what it means to be a human, right? Connecting to the higher realms, like literally interacting with with higher dimensional beings. And I mean, you and and that's I what I'm talking about because now, the like, archetypes the are the angels, like the whole idea of the planetary gods or, or whatever. These are just like subdivisions of source that are higher up than we are where there's fewer divisions. So it's like a more complete and total whole thing. Yep. Does that make sense? So yeah, Absolutely. like when you're talking about higher dimensional beings and I'm talking about psychological archetypes that are within you in your phylogenetic memory as a human being, it is the same thing. It's just like every, it's just like the religions have it. Um, you're talking about the same concept with different metaphors or, or whatever, but yeah, it's, it's there. <laughs> it's absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that that the whole concept of the, talking to angels requires you to be able to do it on the internal level for it to really work out. If you go for the external uh, thing too too readily is where you can kind of get led astray because you're actually sacrificing your sovereignty to the idea that you fully need to be guided by something that you're not totally sure what it even is. Now, when right. it comes to like being guided by a friend or a family member or someone that's a fellow human being, there's a difference there because you have this empathetic ability to know the truth and to know that this is a this is trustworthy that there's love there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, interesting detours we're getting on here. <laughs> That's how it goes. I mean, all is self, you know, we, we both know that for sure. And that's what we're tapping into. I love how you spoke to that. Uh, but the, the external higher dimensions is actually also within you because that's what we're coming back to. You know, literally everything is within us. Everything is within the human body. And through tapping into the full potential of the human body, through embodying our awakening, embodying Thing, like what we've come here to be, we have access to essentially vaster expanses of the universe just by being fully grounded as a light being, you know, of most people who are going to be drawn to this podcast are, you know, by fully grounding ourselves, our awakened selves into our being in our body, we open ourselves up to, to vaster potentialities, man, to the higher realms and to to man, just embodying far beyond anything we could ever imagine here. Uh, totally. And 
going back to the idea of multidimensionality, it means that from your imagination portal, you can actually step through that and become any you in any, you can bend the probabilities of the reality you're currently in and wind up one year from now, you might be in such a different place doing such different things that it was, you might as well have switched lives with somebody. And you have the ability to make the, those big of a shifts in yourself in your life hundreds of times if you wanted to. And that's real multidimensionality. I mean, like, you know, the rabbit doesn't get to just pack up and go to Japan and become a, a fashion model. I mean, it's a really weird example, but I was just like trying to picture you doing something really different. And so I had like this Garrett Zoolander thing imagining, (laughs) but you know, you could do that. You're a pretty handsome guy. And uh, I'm sure that they would accept you if you wanted to just switch career paths and and Zoolander it up. That's what I mean. Like you could totally go into an alternate reality version of Garrett, but while still being your personal consciousness and for all we know when we go to sleep and wake up we're actually hopping into different timelines or system updates of the simulation or whatever you want to call it you know it's it's totally plausible Mm -hmm. absolutely brother and that's one thing that that i actually just said a couple of days ago uh from one of our mentors seven you know he uh he talks about and it resonates deeply with me i died daily you know, I change frequencies daily. And that's the path that I think that we all as awakening beings who are living in our highest alignment should be on and will be on, you know, when we're, when we're living it, like truly living it, not just talking about it, but living it every day, you know, every second of every day, which is the goal as often as we can, then we're changing frequencies all the time especially with what all is going on on the earth right now, just with all the collective shifts of humanity, the cosmic alignments, like the possibilities are infinite for us right now. And if we're choosing to step fully into who we truly are, we can die daily. We can change frequencies daily and become all that we are, you know, and that's not a stagnant thing. That's an ever evolving thing. But what it, what it is that's same throughout the whole thing is we're embodying that spark of divinity that we are. We're embodying who we truly are throughout all of it, no matter what form it takes, what archetype it takes, what position we're doing in the world. It's the same us, like you were saying, that's coming through the whole time. Yeah, and then um, all the external elements of the experience are there to show you what it is that would be most conducive for you to let go of or change for the flow to continue continue on and on Mm -hmm. and yeah back to the connection to the body just the constriction of your body whenever you're tense or stressed or you're doing something that you don't want to be doing with your life too you're giving too much of yourself away like there is such a thing as (laughs) personal boundaries and if you find like this is something i find myself having to reckon with a lot which is uh, feeling guilty for making time just for myself, for taking time just to myself, um, for any reason, like we do, not even necessarily for like a spiritual practice reason, just any kind of selfish use of my time. I've gotten to the point almost where I feel guilty about that, and I know that's like uh, that's harmful to my well being, essentially, to to feel that way. So, you know, luckily I'm I can see that in myself after the pattern has gone on for a little bit. I have the pattern recognition, but a lot of us don't realize because we want to be recognized. (laughs) We want to be good boys and girls. So we want to always, uh, you know, self-sacrifice like that to uh, even family, friends, like you're, if you don't want to be somewhere or you have something that would be better for you to be doing, or you would like to be doing, don't let the thought that someone's going to be disappointed with you hold you back. I mean, don't be rude and stand people up, but you get where I'm coming from? Like, this is, this is a very complicated world. We've now been given like these cars. We can travel from, we can travel from state to state in like a matter of hours. So the impetus for us to actually like show up and be involved in many, many circles of many, many different types of people, based on our interests, based on our family, based on our history, it 
it can be a lot. And it might be like some, sound like a grass is always greener thing. If, if you're a person that doesn't have a lot of social outlets and you're like, well, good for you. You're really busy. Must be nice to have a family. But I think, you know what I mean, man, like in, in general, the society has become so demanding on us for our time. And most of what our time gets spent doing in society actually benefits nobody and maybe even harms people. <laughs> it's, it's a oh. weird it's a weird thing. 100%, 100% man. And I, I know for a fact that that's what we're moving out of, you know, and I'm sure you being in the communities that you're in, you've seen it as well. Um, it's small pockets, you know, small pockets of, of people who are making the change, like what we're doing right now, for example, with this podcast, you know, and we are shifting the way that humanity sees priorities and especially the programs that, that humanity is running right? Um, one big one is taking time for ourselves. And that's a huge thing that we're stepping into now is like saying yes to ourselves. And knowing that as we say yes to ourselves, we're saying yes to, to more of life, right? We're saying yes to everything else in our life that is in, a, in alignment with who we are. And so we're going to have more to give, you know, and also, of course, yeah, stay true to your commitments as much as you can. But like, make it your main goal to be in alignment with you. And whenever we do that, like we bring through realities that we never even dreamed of. Yeah. You, you know? don't even have to go out of your way planning for things when you're really in you. All, it all falls into place with just light intentional um, projection, <laughs> just a little bit of intentional projection and constantly like the people that I'm most in alignment with or people that are like, I don't know, also not stressed out and hating their life and are kind of relaxed about things that I'm friends with. We just seriously will set intentions. I'll be like, Hey, we should go to the gym together sometime. And then the very next time that me and that person go to the gym on our own without planning with each other, we see each other there. Oh, you just got here. Yeah. I just got here, man. You know, like that kind of stuff. I love that, that, man. that is literally, we are capable of making the whole damn thing like that. That mm -hmm. smooth. Like, so so smooth it's as if we meticulously planned it without any actual um unnecessary thinking about the future i guess worrying about the future trying to make the future fit with your vision of what you think it should be and realize that you're growing and blooming like a plant that is uh going to unfold how it's going to unfold and it's just a matter of how how healthily you do it <laughs> how much of that unfolding you can actually express how many fruits you can bear it it uh it's not about being it's not about taking the challenges out of your life either that's mm -hmm. definitely another thing to keep in mind it's not about becoming one dimensional and you know exterminating your shadow self to the point of oblivion where it's no longer something you even choose to believe exists within you <laughs> you know it's always it's always going to be there all light casts a shadow it's a matter of seeing it for what it is as the the whetstone that hones your blade as the spiritual warrior that you are. The shadow is the thing that gives you the motivation to stay in flow, to stay I love that, man. in love and truth. Definitely. And that's kind of, that's kind of the whole thing. I was just speaking about this with somebody a couple of days ago. Everything in our life is either like bringing us happiness and health and comfort and essentially like giving us signals that we're on the right path or it's sharpening our sword. Right. It's it's giving us the raw materials necessary to overcome the things that we've come here to overcome in our lives. Right. To let go of of patterns that we no longer need of mind programming that we no longer need and learn essentially like man to live a more open heart centered life where we're living our passion, and our purpose. And we're bringing forth like the utmost service to humanity, whatever that means to us, whatever that is for us. We bring that through in that way. And so whichever, whichever side of the spectrum an experience falls on, it's ultimately leading us to the same, the same place. We're always going to the same place. And it's just, are you there during that place? Right. And that's what the whole embodiment of the awakening is about. Like it's not out there. Mm. Right. And that, and that's, that's the kicker. It's in here and you're always there. It's always accessible to us. Just in happen. a way, the shadow is the only teacher you've got because if you were only in hunky-dory perfection land with zero shadow, 
A, you would have no need for relationships of any kind. You would just be in a uh, complete, still, infinite being with no per, no, disturbing, no disturbing at all. It would just be, it would kind of be nothingness in a way. But also, you, in a more grounded human sense, if nothing ever went wrong in your life, you would never feel motivated to change anything. So, I mean, generally speaking. So, it is, it's almost like it's the only teacher you've got. But uh, I wanted to ask you, what are some of the skills that you mentioned sharing? Uh, you know, we've, we've already <laughs> gone about half an hour and I know you and me could just oh, talk, and, talk and talk and like, okay. it's easy to get a little bit off of track from what we intended. I mean, we're bringing through what we intended, which is just like me and you sharing truth together. But I know that you had some specific stuff to cover and I wanted to give you some space for that <laughs> before I just yammer on to uh, infinity <laughs> absolutely i love it brother man there's a few of the main things that i've learned throughout my journey that will help us to embody the awakening on this path um so the first one is going to be breath work man and you and i both know how powerful and important this is everything is breath life is breath right breath is the one thing that keeps us going in our lives right when it comes down to it, you can't not breathe for more than, if you're super adept at it, five minutes or so, right? You need oxygen. And so I would like to just take a moment and invite everybody on the podcast to just close their eyes if you can. Tune in and take a few breaths here. And so breathe deep into your belly. And then allow your chest to be filled. And now as you exhale, allow your shoulders to fall. Continue breathing in this way. Deep breath into your belly. Next breath into the chest. Exhale, allow it to fall. And so as you continue breathing in this way, begin to bring your attention to the sensations throughout your body. Feel any tingles, any tight spots, any places that feel blissful for you. Continuing to breathe. And so now once you feel ready, Begin to just open your eyes. And so now I'm going to walk you through a breathing method called the Wim Hof breathing method. I know Chance, of I, Chance and I have done this together. And <clears throat> this is a method that continues to be pretty much on my daily practice uh, for over the last three years. And one thing that this has allowed me to do is like ground my awakening into my body by activating the cells in my body. Essentially, how I see it is the cells, whenever they're stagnant, they're kind of dark and they're not, they're not moving that much. They're not moving at the highest rate that they could. But then when I see myself coming into alignment and embodying that awakening that, that I know that I am, that I'm here to be and to live, I see all the cells of my body turning to light and then just vibrating at a rapid pace. So like I always visualize like the electron going around in the atom. And the electron is spinning like super fast, like this just light atom is just spinning super fast all throughout my body. And so one thing that Wim Hof and the hyper oxygenation, the Wim Hof breathing method has allowed me to experience in my body and several others as well, is like actually integrating that higher self deeply into my body, grounding it into an open heart and just like rooting it into the earth. And so I would like to take all of you guys through one round of this breathing method. And a good practice that you can do, you can do this lying down, seated, and you can do it one to three times. And you can even do it more than that once you get comfortable. But just for now, we're going to do it one time. And just allow and don't you do it if you're driving, because if you're not used to doing this, you could get a little lightheaded. Like you would probably be okay driving, but just be aware that it might be like, 
a head rush if you've never done this before because you're flooding your body and brain with oxygen, which is not bad. It's actually really good. But if you've been deprived, it's kind of like <laughs> a smoker having a cigarette for the first time in uh, two weeks. It's going to be like, whoa, you know, I don't know how else to describe it. It's good. It's a crazy cool feeling. But um, just be be aware of that fun little caveat if you're in a, a vehicle. Amazing advice, brother. Thank you for bringing that through. <laughs> Super key. As someone uh, who's done this while driving before. <laughs> likewise. And may not be the best idea, especially if you've never done it before. <laughs> if you're experienced, though, you'll be okay. Absolutely. So Actually, you'll be okay I, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you will be. Absolutely. So, yeah, if you're not driving, um, allow yourself to come to a comfortable position, either lying or seated. Allow your eyes to close. And just tune into your breath for a few breaths. Take some deep breaths. And feel your body. Feel gratitude for your body. And so one more breath and then I'll explain the method and then we'll do it. And so now what you're going to do is you're going to breathe in in as deep as you comfortably can and then rapidly exhale and the exhale can only be like half of an exhale that's cool and it can be through the nose or the mouth it's going to look and sound something like this exactly so deep full inhale like half of an exhalation and so you're going to do that for about 30 times you just let the chest fall and that's kind of how the exhale works you're just like letting go of the breath but not actually letting the breath out it it's something that I couldn't believe that we could actually do. Like you can just breathe in without breathing out almost forever. Basically it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. So we're going to do that for 30 times. And then in the, in the whole body breathing method that I like to do on the last, on the 30th or the 31st inhale, we're going to breathe in deep and then hold it in. So you're going to hold the breath in for as long as you comfortably can. And then as you exhale, hold it out for as long as you can or 15 seconds, whichever comes first. It doesn't have to be long. And so then after that, you'll just return your breathing to normal and just feel, feel what's different in your body. Feel what's different in your mind. And then we'll tune back in here with you guys after that. And so we'll begin with these 30 breaths, 31st breath, hold it in, exhale when you need to breathe, hold it out, and then return breathing to normal. Let's go. the next one in So once you've completed that, just allow your breathing to return to normal. 
into your body for a few breaths here. What's really remarkable about it is the feeling that your body is not panicked or starved for air because in your normal breathing pattern, for most people anyway, who have kind of a shallow breathing pattern, if you held your breath after about eight or 10 seconds, you'd start to feel like the, oh shit, I need to breathe. Oh shit, I need to breathe. But after doing especially a couple rounds of this, you could wait several seconds between breaths and it would feel completely natural and comfortable. And it's interesting because if you look at breathing in and breathing out as duality, then that space between breaths is balance. So the, <laughs> so when you're really oxygenated, which also even think about oxy, O-X-Y, X-Y chromosome and the circle, which is wholeness, plus gen, which is a generative energy generate, you know, um, just that word indicates b- balance. So you're really, it's hard to describe how many levels of greatness it is for yourself to <laughs> get all that oxygen and just to breathe. It feels great. So thanks for leading us through that. I, um, I'll kick it back to you for a second, but I have a fun anecdote about doing this recently that uh, I'll share too. Absolutely, brother. So one thing that you'll notice if you continue to do this breathing method um, is that maybe you start off being able to hold your breath for 30 seconds and then you continue doing this method over and over again and you'll surprise yourself. You may be able to hold your breath for two minutes, maybe even three minutes, maybe once you get adept enough, even four minutes. Um, and you'll surprise yourself when you do this way of breathing, you're actually releasing DMT from inside of your lungs. And so many people report having out of body experiences, powerful spiritual experiences and all kinds of things in that realm of nature, whenever they're holding their breath doing the Wim Hof breathing method. So it's, it's a very powerful method to implement in your daily life. And what it's going to do is boost your immune system and essentially it's going to help you start making better decisions because you're, <laughs> you're increasing your personal energy, right? <clears throat> Just like what we were talking about earlier, this is one of these methods that increases our personal energy. And so number one, it can be something to increase the health of your container, which is your body to allow you to hold more energy. Um, and also another thing is, it may just increase more energy in your body and you may become aware of other areas in your body where there's leaks, right? Leaks of energy where you need to patch those leaks in whatever way that is, whether it's physical work, releasing tension in your body, whether it's emotional work, uh, whether it's mental reprogramming. And that's one of the, what, that's one of the biggest things that we're going to work on in like with embodying your awakening in the program that I have coming up. Uh, in November, it's it's all about working with your container, your body, to allow you to hold the frequency of energy that you're calling forth into your life because we're all accelerating massive changes right now in our lives. Some of it looks like destruction and distortion. Some of it looks like upliftment, beauty, and rising into the full power of who we truly are. Either way, it's still rising into the full power of who we truly are, whatever it looks like in the moment. Because always there's a death process needed before rebirth. And so that's essentially, like, that's the main thing that we're going to be working towards with this program that's going to be amazing. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you guys more about it later on on this podcast. But um, is strengthening your container, strengthening your, ve- your vessel. May you become a hollow bone so that spirit can come through. That's what it's all about. Like that's what this whole earth experience is about because you're not going to take this body with you when you go, right? You're here to strengthen your spirit and get off the wheel of karma and dharma, right? You're here to exit this, this reality rather than continue to repeat here over and over again, learning lessons and all of that. I think the people who are attracted to us, a lot of them, and especially the people who will be attracted to this program are ready to end the wheel of karma and dharma. They're ready to be done. They're ready to do their main service here on this planet and evolve, you know, enlighten, become fully in that state 
of awaken of awakenness and of enlightenment on this planet earth in this body at this time and that's not a far stretch like it's fucking time like to wake up fully and completely to the truth of who we are and the people who are attracted to this message or to our message into the program are just like they're star beings, right? They're higher dimensional beings who've come into this planet at this point in time to help, to bring assistance onto this planet. And the time to wake up is now the alarm has gone off and it's time. Like we need you. Like that's what it's time for right now. So it's time to fully step into who we truly are, which is an already awakened being. The path of awakening in this way is far different than any path of awakening in the previous thousands of years on this planet. It's not, it's not about like you have to cultivate your awakening and all this kind of stuff. You said cultivate. I was going to say it's not like cults treated it where it was like we're going to just dish out a little bit of the roadmap of consciousness at a time, but uh, you have to come to us for the answers. This is about the answers that you already know that are deep inside you that you just need to get out of your own way about. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, man. It's, it's all about pointing you back to you because you are the one who has all of the answers. You are the one who has the divine blueprint that is going to embody awakening onto this planet earth through your embodiment of all that you are, which is an awakened being you're shifting massive waves of consciousness on this planet earth. Like that's literally all you have to do is be yourself. And that's going to look very different <clears throat> for each person, right? How that manifests in somebody's life. Uh, as they bring forth their awakened self, but essentially like, you know, you could, you could become like a coach, like a high level coach and a healer and like teaching people all these massive ways and realities. Um, or, or you, you could, could just, just be yourself and make you music or make art. Exactly. And just by changing the frequency of yourself, you're actually setting the dial for the whole universe. And because this wow. thing is infinite, you literally get to decide which universe which future you're going to, what, t what version of humanity is going to de develop into. Like, it's actually up to you. This whole, the whole charade has been that there's someone else out there or there's lots of other people who are powerful out there who are going to decide what your reality is going to be like and your future is at the mercy of that. That is the lie. If there's any lie, that's the lie. You actually have 100% power to go into whatever future you are going to decide is going to look like what you are. It's going to look like what you make it. And it could, it could be anything, man. Like it really could. So uh, just know that my personal reality and where I go might be different than where you go, but there'll be a version of me there that matches where you went. So the fact that you're here hearing us talk about it means that we're, <laughs> we're kind of on the same one. <laughs> And if exactly. that makes sense, you know, like we're together. And in a exactly. way, you can even look at that like that's Earth Prime. The, the highest potential of Earth is the infinite. So whenever you are embodying the infinite, which is spirit, then you're in the prime timeline. And then it's another way of looking at it like this Rick and Morty episode where uh, they break they break time because they're so uncertain and the screen splits into multiple screens where uh, there's a slightly different decision being made by the characters in, in each alternate universe. And they have to become so certain about what they are doing that it collapses all the probabilities back down to one. And and that's what, not, it, that's yeah. what it means to embody your awakening. That means being exactly. so sure about yourself, who you are and what you're here to do that you collapse all of the doubt in your mind down to one singular knowing of like, yeah, I'm in the right place. Fucking truth bombs right there, man. And that's what it's all about. It's about being fucking certain about who you are and what you're bringing forth under this planet earth. It's not about like one specific path. Yeah. Right. It's not, it's not about like trying to make the right step, which our whole society has programmed into us that you have to take this step. You have to take this step. And even if you take it off the grid of the societal, like, American dream programming, white picket fence, all that, you can still carry that program. Like I have to do this right. I have to do this right. This is, this is the only way it's going to work for me. But what, the, what you're bringing through here now is just proof to say like, it's not fucking like that. Like what it's about is being certain. And when you focus, you bring through all of your energy and you're certain you are the divine. You cannot mess this up. Right. <laughs> And so that's what it's about. It's about that certainty, man. And, and, and when you create that masculine container of certainty, then that's when the flow comes. That's when the love comes. That's when the feminine, like, 
force of creation comes and you create a beautiful fucking life. And that's what it's all about right now. And this coming into 2020, baby, that's what we're moving into. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't agree more, man. I'm fired up about it. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm no glad, doubt. I'm glad to find myself where I do. I'm really, really glad. Gratitude is a good way to make, to remind you how certain you are that you're in the right place. That's for sure. Uh, you, and you can always find lots of things to be grateful for. I mean, even in uh, pseudo slavery, Americana lifestyle, <laughs> working for the man, paying taxes, all that. Well, no ma- even how brutal that may seem, like uh, it's not going to get worse than that. If if you work on yourself and you make yourself better, it's only going to you're only going to get more freedom. There's a there's a occulted law I like to share with people that I discovered in my research of natural law, which is that the more personal sovereignty you have over yourself or for yourself, the more freedom you have in the external world. So like if your inner self is in balance and in harmony and you can trust yourself not to do shit that's bad for you or bad for other people. So you're like, you have self-control, but I don't mean self-control in like a tyrannical sense where you don't get to have fun or do what you want. I mean, your will your your ego's will is in alignment with the will of creation. So like the capital S self and the lowercase s self are uh, in agreement. So that's when you have sovereignty. That's what it really means. It means that both your destiny and your personal desire are aligned in the same place. So you don't have to like trip about your desire or worry about your destiny. It's just, it's your choosing in this strange Strange way. It's sort of like a paradoxical determinism plus free will thing. But if you have, if you don't have that, you know, if you're self sabotaging, then your external world will be tyranny. And to the point of like the perfect example is if you rob somebody or hurt somebody and you get thrown in jail. I mean, the external reality does get less free the more out of control you become. So it's another way of saying what you said earlier, which is that having more stronger body, a better personal current is going to give you more currency because currency is just another measure of how much freedom you have to move about and do things in the, the Western world. So it's just an important thing to realize that your creative freedom, your spiritual freedom, your life's freedom is all connected to your morality, how your morality aligns with like the actual harmony and the Tao itself. I agree, brother. And man, one of the things about it is like, for example, on my early awakening path, I shunned society, essentially, Um, and probably not as big of terms most of the time anyways, but I took myself out of society, like I did not want any part of society. And as little as I could, I would put myself in society, I would move back into the natural world, study the traditions and all these different healing modalities and things like that. But at the point in my awakening and my journey where I am now is like, I see that it has to be taken back to society, you know, the and hero's journey, the hero's journey. You, exactly. You have to go on the path to get just pretty much to where you were in the first place, but just <laughs> in a different place with a new knowledge to right? return home, but see it with new eyes, you know? That's what that's what the entire journey of consciousness is. We're always just returning back to the wholeness and the infinite originality of what we've always been. But every turn of the wheel gives us a new appreciation for just how much depth, width, width breadth, and height the vast reaches of our inner selves really contain. Absolutely. And, and then we go wa- take another lap. <laughs> it's a big cosmic clock. Right. Big, huge cosmic clock. Man, yeah. And essentially, so I'm just going to go ahead and bring this out now. I'm starting a program uh, beginning. uh, The pre-work essentially begins next week, but the the actual start date is on 11-11. And that begins with a ceremony, um, a group call ceremony. And so essentially what this whole process that I'm taking these 12 divine, beautiful souls through is a process of taking out all of the guesswork, right? A process of taking out the unnecessary thing, the fillers and the waste of time, essentially that I've, I've learned through my path of 10 years of being on this spiritual awakening path. 
and boiling it down to the things that are really simple, man. And I'm talking like relationship dynamics. I'm talking about physical body healing through different movements and adding new elements to your nutrition. Um, I'm talking about mental reprogramming and essentially, so my course will be, the course will be a four month program that walks people through four phases successively, like in order, but then also like the phases are intermingling throughout the program. And the four phases are ground, activate, integrate, and embody. And so essentially, through the meditations that we'll do in the program, along with all of the other skills that you'll learn and and be able to integrate into your life and embody them to aid in your embodiment, through these stages, the overlying theme of each stage goes as this. So the grounding stage is receiving your vision, receiving the vision of your life and connecting with your higher self and what you come here to be and do. The next phase, activate, is moving into your vision. The third phase, integrate, is living your vision, right? Beginning, so the whole point about awakening of what we're bringing onto the planet right now, what I'm offering, what I'm bringing into my own life and offering to other people is living awakening in every second, you know, at every moment, at every breath and every step. Because that's, that's what we're moving into. That's what we've come here to be. We've come here to be awakened beings all of the time, not just for the 30 minutes when we're on the cushion and the hour on the yoga mat, right? <clears throat> and so also, and not just like when we're in private. So that's, that's another key element of this. This course is definitely for empaths who are learning to integrate back into the world because essentially like that's what's going on, man, is there's a huge crumbling of false realities for ourselves and for other people in the world. And so we're learning how to carry our awakening out into the world so that no longer do we entrain to the world and therefore hide from it because we don't want it. But we begin to become so confident and embodied in our vision and our awakening and who we truly are that we begin to imprint society. Society begins to entrain to us. And I'm talking like this is like big, powerful beings that we are, right? And that we're learning how to embody that's, that's what that's I was what talking about earlier when I said, like, you you get to pick the alternate version of the reality you're in. You really do. Absolutely, you do, brother. You can do anything and be anything that you want, for sure. And so the third phase, again, is living your vision. And then the fourth phase is full embodiment, right? And this is a four-month program. You know, you're so, it's going to keep going on after you finish program but the goal in the program is to begin to be your vision that's what the fourth phase is all about becoming your vision like you're not just taking actions and and living your vision in this way you actually become the vision you become the embodiment of who you truly are in your higher self and what you've come here to be right and so through all of these phases we're going to go through physical exercises physical healing different types of movement breath work and um, emotional healing, many different emotional techniques. Like I said, we're going to talk about relationship dynamics. We're going to do things to bring you into places that have kept you stuck in trauma in your life, that's stored in your body. We're going to move to look at that trauma and release that trauma so that you can actually bring your awakened self like into that area of your body and like literally fully embody all that you've come here to be. Like your spirit is just waiting to fully come in. And oh, it's, so, yeah, it, it is. It's waiting for you to have the energy <laughs> exactly. to, uh, to, to do what it wants to do instead of just do the same thing every day. Exactly. And so also we'll be working a big thing will be like mental reprogramming. Right. And so again, we're not casting out the shadow, like what you were saying here, brother earlier, but what we're doing is like learning how to be in right relation with it all and learning how to, create our reality from that these physical bodies are actually like literal instruments that we've come here to embody and navigate right and we're navigating navigating them for a very specific purpose right and so if you're called to work with me in this program like essentially 
what you're doing, what you're navigating your body to bring is healing to the earth in some way. You know, you're bringing your awakening to the earth in some way. And so how I see it for me is like, I know that I'm already an awake being. And so my job is to embody that awake, awakened being that I am. And in embodying that, I can direct the energy anywhere that I want on this earth. And like, literally, I don't want to see any more suffering on this earth. So like, as I embody more and more fully, that's what my efforts move more and more into is eradicating suffering on this planet. You know, whether that's giving people food to eat, water to drink, supporting those causes, or helping to empower beings who are fellow light workers, light leaders, to step into who they are as their fully activated, enlightened, embodied self to carry out the waves of rippling consciousness into the world. But I mean, essentially, when I'm working with people, like what I'm doing is I'm learning, I'm, I'm helping them learn how to clear out their field, clear out their bodies in whatever way, you know, through all of the skills that I've learned in the last 10 years to embody this divinity that they are and that they've come to be in this form. Yeah, you got to have right? a clean temple You have to have for, a the, clean temple. for the deity to come with, reside in it. And, you know, one of the things that can trip us out on the, on the quest is we all do want to eliminate suffering, but we have to realize that just like, just like our relationship to the shadow will never be like some sort of finality or some sort of ultimate victory over it where it's banished forever, that it's like a necessary component to the reality. Suffering too will always be there. Not that you shouldn't seek to alleviate it, but realize it will always be there and you cannot actually take it out of the world any more than you can take the shadow uh, off of the afternoon ground when the sun is starting to get low. But you can, uh, what, the best way to mitigate the, uh, the suffering or take away the unnecessary suffering is to actually acquaint yourself with appropriate suffering like physical exercise. There's a point where you actually can choose a type of suffering for yourself that strengthens you intentionally so that you don't suffer later down the line. I mean, it's only, it's the simplest example with exercise because it might seem like it sucks to jog a few miles a couple times a week, but whenever you're 85 years old and you can still do things for yourself, you'll be glad that you suffered then and you're not suffering in like a hospital bed. So realizing that uh, we we don't have to get like I I used to really have this save the world complex where like I let it stress myself out that I wasn't doing enough to save the world and just realize guys that it's actually your healing of yourself that is the biggest factor in saving anything or mitigating suffering uh, everywhere because the suffering in the external world whenever it's inappropriate when it's um, torturous tyrannical. It has everything to do with your tyrannical relationship to yourself and the suffering you cause yourself that is um, unbalanced or unhealthy or unnatural types of suffering. And in a way, it's all natural because it's leading you to your next evolutionary stage. But um, yeah, we, you can become the conductor of it instead of being a conductor. That's another charge-related, energy-related word. It, but be be the conductor of the shadow instead of being the the victim of it, I guess, is, is really where it's at. Absolutely, brother. <clears throat> it's all this about exciting stuff, man. You guys should really get in with Garrett. <laughs> you, you don't know what you're missing out on. It's a four part program. That's the strongest number for, uh, for structuring right. something like this for sure. It sounds great. That's right, brother. Yeah, man. Um, it's going to be incredible. And so basically, you know, to, to finish off the discussion about the program, essentially what it's allowing you to do is to be the container that you come here to be for your spirit to come all the way through so that not only does your body and your beingness become the container for your spirit, but eventually throughout the program and the work that you'll continue to do afterwards and onward, your spirit integrates with your body fully. And there's just one. There's only one. You're living as that awakened being. Like that's what the whole goal is, getting off the roller coaster of, of highs and lows and finding the happy medium. You know, throughout any of life's circumstances, learning to live in neutrality and remain in your awakened state, even when things come up so that you can see them for what they truly are, 
move through them and essentially create and live the life that you've come here to live so that you can be of the ultimate benefit and maximum service to people and to be the happiest yourself. And do that it. is what makes you happiest is to be at the most service. Absolutely, brother. And that's what it is, man. You guys get on with it for me or with me. Uh, send me a message about that. <laughs> Whatever. That's the uh, paradox is like being doing what's best for you is what allows you to be of utmost service to others happily. But enslaving yourself to the world and thinking you need to work 80 hour jobs and support uh, to, to do this or that. And like, you need to just bust ass to get that promotion at work. You know, like all the things that we, we think that we need to do because we feel our survival might be threatened if we don't get the money or whatever. That's the type of service to others that's enslaving you to others because you're, if you're enslaved to others, if you don't have, if you don't have a minute for yourself, if you don't have a, the resources to keep yourself in balance, healthy, uh, non-traumatized, non not stressed out. So uh, that's, that's the key, the key secret to becoming an actual servant to humanity is to serve, serve yourself and fill yourself up first. That's a huge, huge thing that is not really taught to the Western American work ethic. But this sounds like an awesome program. I want to tell you this anecdote real quick about the Wim Hof breathing before I forget. It just popped into my mind. I was at the park the other day and it was about 50 degrees, maybe 55 degrees, but kind of windy. So quite cold. But I was walking around. I don't walk on the, the paths very much. I mostly walk through the grass. It's a really huge park, but I do it barefoot. And it was a colder day. I didn't have a jacket on and I didn't have sh socks or shoes on. And I kept passing by kids and the kids would be like, why don't you have shoes on? And their moms would be like, oh my God, aren't you freezing? And they're all like in winter coats. And it's, I mean, it's not winter yet, but not, not judging, but our ancestors would have went ran around in loincloths in the middle of the snow you know like <laughs> i was just doing wim hof breathing and it allowed me to, I, when i first got there i stepped out of my car i felt chilly i started doing the breathing and i just kept doing it as i walked i didn't even worry about what round i was on or anything i just kept that high oxygen going and then eventually i didn't even need to really do it anymore i just breathed normally and i felt warm for like the rest of the walk i might start to get a little cold again and then i do another round of the wim hof breathing but you can really regulate your body temperature without even having a lot of practice in that type of, of breath work. And it's huge. It's huge. Like just no longer being so vulnerable to cold is what I mean by like alleviating unnecessary suffering. <laughs> you know, the, but uh, yeah, this, I love is, it, brother. this has been great, That's man. This conversation has been really fun. Absolutely, brother. It's always a joy and a pleasure to get on here with you, man. I always look forward to it when I get the opportunity. Yeah, we hit an hour like nothing, so. <laughs> you could do it all day, man. Next time you're on, you're going to have to tell us about all the South America adventures you've been on because that's a whole other thing in itself. And you've probably got more techniques you can share with us too. I definitely do, man. And I will do that for sure. Get into Embody Your Awakening. You'll learn all of these techniques and create that smooth sailing life as you embody your awakening and the divinity that you come here to be informed. And... Also, currently right now, I'm in Canada. And so I'll tell you about that on our next, our next interview as well. Um, but yeah, man, just uh, stay whole, stay balanced, stay with it, everybody. You know what to do. Find your inner compass and your guide within and follow that no matter what. And it'll take you to the end result of who you've come to be in this form, spirit embodied in the world for the benefit of all. Ho, Matakrias. All right, guys, check out Garrett's website, GrahamHolisticHealing.com. You can get in touch with him from there or the Facebook page of the same name. I'm sure he'd like to just say hi or maybe even start coaching you and he'll give you, correct me if I'm wrong, but you'll give folks a, a consultation for free to see if they yeah. feel it would be a good fit to work together. Is that true? Absolutely, brother. Yeah. So get on Garrett's website. I'll link that in the comments here or in the show notes. and. If you haven't checked out Interverse before, somehow, there's a whole archive of fun episodes you can access at interversepodcast.com. You can subscribe on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, everywhere that podcasts are served. And there's some 
episodes with Garrett that are particularly good that I frequently get feedback on even still like great stuff <laughs> great Amazing. stuff uh, always inspiring it. to chat with you brother thanks everybody for tuning in and uh share the show too if you feel so inclined it, it can only help i mean we basically had nobody tune into the live stream uh, i'm not crying about it but i am shadow banned on facebook so if you want to help the podcast grow you're the only ones that can because <laughs> i'm not paying facebook with advertising money no way oh, all right all right love you guys uh peace out Love your tribe.